Let us join in worship today. Welcome all on this Sunday in which we celebrate the Trinity. It is good to see you here, whether you're here physically or tuning in on our live stream. It's good to have you here with us this day. I invite you to use the call to worship that is printed in your bulletin to prepare ourselves for worship this day. O Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. Behold in the splendor of creation your majesty and our responsibility. In the beginning was the Word with God, and the Word was God. Wisdom was there rejoicing, delighting in the human race. In every time and place, God's love is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we continue with Trinity Sunday, each hymn will highlight a different person of the Trinity. We will start with the Spirit hymn number 322, Spirit of the Living God, sung through three times.
the Spirit comes and fills this place, let us affirm that which we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As the persons of the Trinity allow us to get and be in closer relationship with God, we know that we can go before God with all that we have to offer. All of our faults and shortcomings we can confess before the throne of God. So let us join together and lift up all that we have. Triune God, your name is majestic throughout all the earth, yet we put aside your majesty, seeking our own power and gain. Though we are made in your image, we confess that we distort the triune life. Instead of seeking mutual welfare and the common good, we seek our own gain. In our greed, we use more resources than we rightly need, and we seek our own gain. We confess that we do not fully comprehend the damage that we have done to all your creation. Forgive us, we pray. And let your majesty fill our senses and pervade our actions, that we may become stewards of creations. Restore in us and in our life together the divine image you intend. Call us to care for one another so that all your people flourish. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Believe the good news of the Apostles' Creed and of the Scripture that Christ came and lived. Christ was crucified on our behalves and after three days was raised from the dead by the power of God. By this power we are forgiven this day and every day. Amen.
time for the life and the work of the church. So if you have anything to lift up before the congregation this day, I invite you to do so now. If you look at your insert, you can see the things that are coming up in the life of the church. We will not have Bible study this afternoon as you can tell some of us are ready to go to a baseball game that will occur Right after worship, we will leave and head to Fredericksburg. Um, because of this, there is no after worship gathering in the fellowship hall. But if you are interested in participating in that, they still need folks to sign up for July and August. I believe that we have enough drinks at this point. Um, so if you just want to bring a uh, snack, cookies, whatever it may be, you can just sign up to do that as I believe we're stocked on drinks at this point. Uh, the PW is uh, still collecting single serve items. Those can be dropped off in the fellowship hall. Uh, not listed here is Vacation Bible School, which will occur August 5th and 6th. Uh, that will be a Friday for uh, afternoon, evening lock-in for older youth, and then an all-day Saturday event with more details to come. Also, please go ahead and mark on your calendar July 10th. We will have worship change to 10 a.m. There will be no Sunday school that day. Um, it will be July 10th. There is a charity bike ride coming through. They have asked to use our church as a rest stop for some 400 bikers coming through this area as they make their way up to Trenton, New Jersey, uh, 400 miles, I believe, starting in Charlottesville. Um, so they are going to be here. If you'd like to stick around and cheer them on, you're more than welcome to, uh, but they'll be using our facilities that day uh, around 11 o'clock, 1130. Um, I have been asked to uh, reinstate something that used to be done, and that is to highlight the birthdays and anniversaries that we have coming up each week. So uh, if your birthday or anniversary occurred before this week, just happy birthday late and happy anniversary late. So we'll cover everybody uh, from the first of the year to now. Um, and then this week we have Barbara Waters, Warren Gallahan. Uh, is having birthdays and then we wish a happy anniversary to Larry and Linda Brooks, Ronnie and Debbie Settle, and Bill and Beth Alexander. We wish all of them a happy, happy week. Um, with that, let us turn to God in prayer. Oh God, though it may be gray outside, we come to you this day with open hearts and open minds with smiles upon our face to be with each other to have this opportunity to come to you to feel the spirit in this place to get to know Jesus' teachings more 
and for God's light to shine for each of us. And we ask you this day that you reach out your hand, that you heal those who are sick, that they may feel your comfort, that you may fill them up with your love. Those who are recovering from positive COVID tests and those who are dealing with long-term illnesses, those in the midst of recovery, we pray that you will be with them. And we pray for this nation as we see things happening here about stories of tragedy and loss that those who need you this day will have you. That you inspire the leaders of this country to do what is right and just in your eyes. And that all may see your love as an example so that all may be able to love. We ask you this day to bring peace to this world to end the division amongst each other, the petty squabbles over little things, that the Prince of Peace, whom you sent to lead us, may guide us down the road so that we may be inside of your stronghold, that we may see the glory of your heaven and earth united realized. And we lift our voices this day together and pray the prayer that your Son taught His disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to present before God all that we have to offer, our tithes, our offerings, and our very lives this day. Let us present them to God. God, we lift these gifts up to you this day. We lift our hearts and our minds up to you. We lift our hands and our feet up to you so that you may use all that we have presented before you this day to further your love in this world and to shine your light as you desire it. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able for him. Number 310. Jesus, the very thought of Thee.
Please be seated. Will you pray with me once more? God, may the Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds to the teaching of your word this day as it is read aloud for each and every one of us. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm 8. Listen now for God's word today. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foes and the avengers. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them, You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You have put everything under their feet, all the flocks and herds, the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swims in the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture lesson comes from Proverbs 8, verses 1 and through 4 and 22 through 31. Listen once more for the word. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand beside the gates leading into the city At the entrance, she cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. The Lord brought me forth as the first of His works before His deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place. When he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, When he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundaries so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was constantly at his side, being the great master worker. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, Rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. The grass withers and the flowers fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Proverbs as a whole, and also here in Proverbs 8, beautifully personifies wisdom. We gain a greater perspective here today about who wisdom is as a person. But as we read this scripture today, she appears to be very different from what we can often consider to be wisdom. Wisdom is often portrayed at its peak as potentially intellectual or academic in nature. The wisest people are often considered the most learned people. They have learned via experience or intense studies. Perhaps you have figures pop into your mind such as the Dalai Lama or Stephen Hawking when we think of wisdom in those who are wise in the world. A person that is surrounded in their study with massive dusty books and papers scattered throughout their office and big glasses needed from years of looking at the extra small font in the academic books that they have. 
or perhaps your uh, idea of wisdom is a little bit different. Perhaps it's someone that is so experienced in their trade that just pulling your car into their garage, they can tell what's wrong with it by the sound that it's making. They've spent all of this time and energy to make themselves wise in their profession. This is wisdom for many of us. Yet Proverbs 8 gives a different view of wisdom, a different kind of experience. It's an experience not for the sake of progressing in your trade, but rather it is for the sake of creation. Wisdom is a full sensory experience here in our scripture. We can find wisdom in a variety of locations, and it's all for the purpose of joy and delight. The scripture begins with describing her in all sorts of locations. She's on the heights where the roads meet. She's in the street greeting the traveling people. She's in a public location of the gate at the city entrance. This is where the business is done as arranged marriage and the selling of land is happening. Think uh, of Ruth where all of the story takes place at the gate when Boaz is trying to move forward. It's also where justice is carried out. It's a court of sorts. And then she's found in the entrances of doorways where the thresholds are crossed. In all of these places, she raises her voice and she cries out and her message is calling to every human on the planet. Proverbs 8, 1 through 4 reiterates that it's not hard to find woman wisdom, nor is it difficult to hear her voice. It's not something where we need to be an apprentice of someone who is of a master of their trade or pay thousands of dollars to attend a top-tier Ivy League school to find wisdom. No, wisdom is calling out from all places and offers us all that she has the entire human race to experience the joy and delight of wisdom. Wisdom affirms that she was a part of creation, active with God from the start, at the beginning, before she was hovering over the deep and influenced the way humans were formed as were created in their image, a triune image of God, wisdom, and word by which we are all created. Wisdom was found at creation, at the founding of the heavens. And wisdom is, is what allows us to expand our understanding of creation. Wisdom allows us to experience creation at its source so that we may hear the voice of truth that she presents to us. Shirley Guthrie, a theologian who I thoroughly enjoy reading, writes this, If Christian faith claims to speak of the truth, it must have some correspondence with the truth that we can learn from all forms of natural science, philosophy, modern psychology, and any attempt of artists to grasp the mystery of life. God is not the prisoner of the Christian church. We must expect Him to be present and at work also outside the sphere of those who know about and depend upon the church. Wisdom works in a mysterious way, and when we limit who she is to what we think is and isn't acceptable to be wise, we're limiting God. How often do we, excuse me, how often do we believe that wisdom is a part of nature or a part of the creation process of an artist. Wisdom worked alongside God as a master worker, according to some translations. Yet in other translations, this master worker is translated as meaning little child. Who among us is as creative as a young child? Their minds, as told not only by this scripture, but others in our Bible, may be the wisest of us all. For they find joy in 
creation, in the items that have been and are being created, a teacher of many years and a teacher brand new can tell you just how creative a young child can be. They find joy in this. So what can Lady Wisdom and little children teach us? What have we been called to experience today? Simply, we are called and shown how to find joy in all that God has created, wherever we may be. Verse 4 declares that all are called to experience wisdom, and so are you. This call has been heard by many, and I believe that it is one of the good things that came from the pandemic. More people than ever have been called out into creation to experience all that God and wisdom have created together. According to the National Park Service, visits to national parks have increased anywhere from 45% at the lowest visited national park to 75% at the highest visited national park, which happens to be Acadia. And a Penn State research study shows that uh, hiking trails and the activity of camping has increased 30% throughout COVID years as people have sought out joy and delight amongst the created. Perhaps this is a new type of evangelicism. The evangelism of nature, the call of wisdom and all that creation is calling us to experience God. It's not some hidden way to get people to God masked behind social media and apps. Rather, it's highlighting all that God is for each of us in creation, calling us to be an active part with wisdom, with God. Someone who comes to us as a father figure or a mother is calling to us a spirit identified as both male and female depending upon the speaker, a God that is found as much in the trees and the rocks as is found in the pews of a church is calling to us to experience. This joy of wisdom is what we're called to so that we may find a light that we can bring us to question how we get more and more wisdom how do we become directed towards Christ? Christ, the ultimate example of care and joy in our world. Via these experiences of creation, of being active in nature, of getting up out of our seat, we can answer the call of wisdom to come out, to leave the place where we are so stuck so that we may be renewed so that we may find joy in all that she has to give us. John Calvin offers us this thought. Wherever you cast your eyes, there is no spot in the universe wherein you cannot discern at least some sparks of God's glory. You cannot in one glance survey this most vast and beautiful universe without being overwhelmed by its boundless force of brightness. There is nowhere that we cannot see the beauty of God's creation. And while we can choose to ignore it or not recognize the beauty of God's creation and the call of wisdom, think about how that worked out for, for Jonah. It, it really didn't. But we are always there. We always have the call placed upon our lives to experience. It's always around us, offering us joy and delight as we listen to her cry from afar. Ignoring the cry of wisdom is ignoring all that God has offered us. It ignores all the extended call that God has placed upon our lives. Psalm 8 you have made them humans ruler over the work of your hands. What is the heavens and the works of your fingers that you even acknowledge us? Wisdom calls us so that we may experience all that has been created. 
Wisdom's experience is meant to teach us how to find joy in care and creation care and care for all that has been created. Taking delight in the tending of earth, not abusing the resources that we have been blessed with, getting our hands dirty, digging into the soil, having joy in the care that we can provide for the animals in our lives, whether it be dogs and cats or pigs and horses, it's not without work. And it's not without seeking or answering the call of wisdom, but it is the actions that we are called to by the divine. Wisdom, it's, it's not passive. She tells us as much in our scripture today. She's calling out. She is creating. She is a part of God, the triune Godhead, which we worship and celebrate today. We ask her to come each Sunday and fill us with the wisdom of the word. And she calls us out into the world so that we may experience all that she and God have to offer us. I said earlier that wisdom is a full sensory experience. We can find joy in wisdom when we listen to her call to us to be a part of creation and active in the world. That's where we hear wisdom. The seeing part is easy as well, for we can see wisdom all around us in all that is created. From the person who has been created that sits next to you to the, the delight that can be found when we surround ourselves deep in creation, deep in nature. We can see wisdom all around us, not just in what has been made, but what is being made and sustained. We see the joy of wisdom in the eyes of the children as they write letters or paint families that go up on the refrigerator door. We see the delight in the animals that we call companions that cuddle and nuzzle us. All of these things that we see are a part of the wisdom experience, all that has been created. Now when you leave this place, touch the soil or a tree, give someone in the pew next to you a hug or an elbow nudge, touch what has been created. Feel the connection amongst all things that God has made. There you can find daily delight, just as God has. The final sense taste, you may be wondering how I'm going to spin this one, but take what has been the best meal that you've ever had in your life. That delight, that tingle of the taste buds. That's experiencing wisdom, the wisdom of the cook, the joy of a good meal, the delight of consuming all that has been created and used for the purpose of sustenance. That is tasting wisdom, hearing, seeing, touching. All these senses are part of the experience of joy and wisdom. And it's all different. It's a full sensory experience. The joy and delight of wisdom as we read in Proverbs 8 is for everyone. Everyone is called to be active in the world, to care for the world, to experience all that creation has to offer. God wants joy and delight for each and every one of us. That in Christ we may find a way into a relationship that is joyful and by the cry of wisdom, we may be brought into this relationship deeper and deeper. So on Trinity Sunday, we are shown and called by wisdom to recognize the creativity of God, the sibling-type relationship between wisdom and Christ being there together at the beginning as wisdom and word with God. And finally, the ever-presence of the Spirit, the Spirit of truth, of joy, of delight, of wisdom, in which we can seek and find daily. We simply have to answer her call so that we may become wise in the most joyful of ways. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit for hymn number 478, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
remind you if you're planning on heading to the baseball game that we will meet in the fellowship hall to kind of uh, prepare the convoy for heading to Fredericksburg. So meet us there to prepare. If you are not, and whether or not you're going to the baseball game, I hope that you will go out on a cloudy Sunday and find wisdom somewhere in creation. Find it as a full sensory experience that you are all called to do so. So on Trinity Sunday, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, go in peace, for you shall be led forth as the mountains and the hills burst before you into song, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Go now. Thank you.